Well, uh, thank you very much. Nice intro. I was asking who was this guy you were presenting, but uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for the invitation, and it's an honor also to be amongst friends, no? I mean, you always, uh, I think uh, uh, we're, we've become a close generation, even though we're spread out in different parts of the world. But anyway, I wanted to start uh, the lecture, and it's called uh, Contagious Risk. Um, we have always feared contact, uh, being infected by the other, what we don't know, or what may result as a threat to us. But especially in the last century and a half, a certain puritanism disguised as hygiene has gained pop a particular control over us. Uh, I started becoming conscious about the idea of, uh, of contagious risk, and I think uh, it, it comes from uh, uh, being in a place where you don't want to be tied up like this, you don't want to be covered in this plastic uh, uh, or this protective shield, uh, especially not uh, coming from Mexico City, you know? I'm, as uh, Ada said, I'm, I'm from Mexico City, and it, this is a place where you really uh, are exposed to everything. You're, you're, every day you're in contact with everything, and, and you, it couldn't be any other way. And everybody, of course, uh, with the out outburst of the swine flu uh, last year, I mean, everybody, it was really scary, you know? I mean, even in Mexico, when we're a society that is, you always touch each other, no? It's, we're really about contact, and uh, at that time, uh, nobody touched each other. Even your close friends were like, hi, how are you? And it, it suddenly became awkward, no? And, and, and I started uh, uh, really thinking about what was happening to me personally or how I, how I felt, not only as an architect, but how it, it was affecting me. And coming from Mexico City where nothing really works as it should, nothing, I, I think it's a perfect playground or the perfect environment because you put your feet out the corner and you're almost run over by a, a pesero, as we call them, or a bus. And uh, so there's always opportunities every corner, but you just have to open your mind and be aware of what's happening, you know? You have to be open to this contagious risk that I, that I talk about. And it maybe also has to do with where I come from, no? This is a, a father who's a scientist. He won National Science Prize. Well, he is a scientist, I'm sorry. And my mother who went to look for her guru in India. So kind of this mix, uh, also starting to uh, understand what happens with this contagious risk of the backgrounds or even with professions, no? When I was uh, playing in the band, and please don't laugh at this image, <laughs> this, uh, I mean, I was doing it professionally. I know it might not look really professional, but uh, we cut four albums with Virgin Records and we were, it was great, but I was doing it at the same time. And I started noticing that society couldn't, couldn't handle it too much because my, my professors at school, they were telling me not to make them waste their time because they were already seeing me on TV or they, they saw that we had albums out or videos. And, uh, and, it, and the, on the other hand, on the architectural part, and nobody believed that I was an architect because I, they would see me in the band, they would say, my house is not, obviously you, you're not an architect, no? My house is gonna fall. I'm not gonna trust a drummer, no? So, uh, but you start understanding that, I mean, with time and, and, and by working hard and by believing in what you do, uh, you find a way, you know? This is uh, some of the work that I did with Mikel and Isaac, these two partners that I had. This is the F2 house. We did projects for the government, the National Video Tech that was uh, opened by uh, Ernesto Cedillo during his government. Uh, this is another uh, residential building that we also designed. And um, uh, some interior spaces. And with this, I just wanted to say that uh, we experimented in a lot of fields. And I, and I like the idea because I also, uh, coming from music, also understanding that when you, when you tell somebody that you play or you're a musician or you're an architect or, or in any art, I think, uh, people come up to you and say, but what style? Like, kind of what do you do? And they want to tag you with something. So uh, being an architect, I didn't want to specialize in houses or specialize in office space or specialize in any other uh, particular field because I didn't want to end up doing that for the rest of my life. I, I love design and I, I want to design anything that I can get my hands on or anything that it really becomes design challenging. Uh, after three years with uh, Isaac and Mikel, uh, I started feeling that I was getting into a comfort zone, and I didn't, again, I didn't like it. No, I, I wasn't comfortable on, on, a project came in and we started designing it the same way as we would do uh, most of the other projects. And I went on my own, and this is, I like this image, the boy in the plastic bubble, I don't know if you remember it, but uh, I didn't want to feel uh, trapped by my own, by my own way of doing things. So, um, ah, so, um, I decided to, uh, to come out of the office, I mean, to split and went on my own, but I didn't go on my own to become independent or isolated. I decided to go on my own because I still wanted to keep on experimenting with other architects or with other disciplines as I do today. And this is the case when I invited Bjarke, Bjarke Ingels to team up with me on a project uh, for the Tamayo Museum. And, um, and this is a project that it was seven architects. 
uh, invited. And uh, the interesting thing is that because they were in Denmark, we could work 24 hours uh, nonstop, no? And so we, we had two weeks to do the competition. And uh, so it was like we had one complete month. Uh, we presented a project. Uh, this is the place where it's located. This is Atizapan in the state of Mexico. And uh, actually, these are the drawings given, given to us by the client. Uh, and it's, it's, I mean, they were really neurotic. If you see the drawings, I mean, they gave us, they gave us uh, these diagrams. And then they gave us even floor plans. So who does a competition and gives you floor plans? I mean, they, they should do them themselves. I mean, if they're already sure how to have the floor plans. But we decided to, I mean, go on in, 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 in various, I want to take this out, sorry. In, in various directions, and we tried, we tried different options of the project, and then uh, actually we came back and we said, well, you know what, if the client is really, really into what, what he's doing, why don't we take this piece out of the project, and why don't we put it underneath, and why don't, what, what happens if, if we uh, have a, a cross as, we, as the client wanted at the beginning, you know? so we have the same uh, diagram of functionality that the client wants, but we actually give him something uh, that, that, uh, that becomes a bit iconic because of its uh, uh, shape, and we were talking about an open box. This is this is a, a museum that uh, most of its part is is, um, um, is a storage space. So we convinced the client that if it, there was so little of exhibition area, why didn't he open it up uh, as an exhibition all all over? No, the the storage space, as we know, some of the galleries. But we, I mean, in my head, I, I had all these private galleries that open up to to uh, people going, but not not an open museum. So they 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 like the idea, and what we try to do is. Uh, we created an outer skin for the building, and you have a ramp going on one side, you have a, a staircase going on the other side, you have an elevator, and then you have this uh, circulation area. And, uh, and, and the, idea, the nice idea is that since most of it is storage, you can get away with a, with a new skin on the, on the exterior of the, of the facade that was not only about uh, putting the art on the inside. So we started experimenting on, on perforating the facade and working with a company in Mexico called uh, Santa Julia, which they do these uh, glazed bricks. And uh, by creating six different patterns of, or six different uh, sizes of bricks, we came up with, with a, a, a facade that had opening to the exterior part. And as you can see here, the, you can have uh, nice views to the outer part. And then on the inside, you have, you have uh, in some cases, one glass. But in, in, in some other cases, the, the structure on the inside is wrapped by glass. So you have uh, uh, two layers of, of glass on the inside of the, of, the, um, of the circulation area to protect, obviously, the art from temperature. Uh, a way of structuring it because even when we're designing, we're always thinking, I think that was a good um, uh, learning from the beginning since I was uh, going to uh, my construction sites. Uh, now I don't build anymore, fortunately. You know, I have, obviously we finished the project and then there's the bidding for the contractors. But uh, at the beginning in Mexico, you would start to do your own stuff. You know, whatever you designed, you would go on site and, and you would supervise that it was done right. So uh, at least I think that gave me enough uh, 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 learning to, to really enjoy the experience. And I, I really love uh, being on construction sites. Some of the details of the bricks. And this is the, the, the model. Uh, and if you look at it from the inside, it was a very, a very logical idea of, uh, or a very logical uh, structure on the inside, the double skin, so you can actually uh, start learn, uh, seeing how this works. Um, the gallery area, and because you had a, cant you, you had a sloped area, and uh, uh, obviously besides th this neurotic part of the client really being obsessed of how he wanted it to function, uh, he wanted it to be really flat on this sloped uh, terrain that he had. So uh, we put, a, 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 as I explained before, part of the program underneath, so you can have this cantilevering uh, two parts of the cross. And this is also a little bit of what we wanted, uh, or we want people to experience when you're even going down the ramp, you can also look on the inside. And this is, I mean, this is a representation of the most extroverted it can get without any parishions, without any uh, thing on the inside in case uh, it, it could happen one day. But um, these are the cantilevers, 90 meter, uh, 19 meters uh, cantilevers on two sides and creates a nice shadow um, intention underneath the, the, the space. Um, again, this other view at nighttime where you can actually uh, light the, the in between the two skins from the top, some floor plans and... Uh, sections of, of how it's standing on the, on the site, a view of Atizapan, this is in the state of Mexico. And um, uh, unfortunately now this, this project is, uh, it's not been put on hold. I mean, we're working on the project, but in a very slow pace. I mean, everything I think got really uh, slowed down as uh, not as fast as we wanted to, but um, 
it's more of a political issue because uh, the site was donated by the, the PRI party and then the PAN won. So the PRI doesn't want to give the site away because uh, the PAN will get all the uh, nice uh, uh, media attention. No? So these are the things that happen in Mexico. Uh, and then um, coming back now to the, uh, after the first project when I came out of working with Isaac and Miquel, uh, was uh, the PR34 house. And this is the first time I started understanding that, that uh, when I was working for a, for a client, I mean, the most important thing was my client. It was not the program that they gave us. I mean, if we can't solve the functional part of a, of a program, I mean, there's no use in, in being an architect. No, I mean, the functional part to me in my head is, is, is a given because you work at, to have the best function and the best way that a program can work, but you're sitting down with somebody that's totally different from the next guy sitting with you. So uh, we don't have a catalog of buildings we just pull out and, and, and give to clients. So this is the first time I, I really understood that I, w I was sitting down with a 19-year-old ballet dancer, uh, and uh, her father had uh, hired me to refurbish his house and then put an addition on top, which the awkward thing that he wanted an addition uh, uh, for her daughter to be independent, so he decided to put her daughter on top of the house, <laughs> uh, which was not really independent, no, on, on top of there. Um, and speaking to uh, or talking to the uh, to the ballet dancer and knowing what she liked and didn't like, this is a floor plan. And as you can see, it's it's very simple. It's a very functional uh, uh, two elements. And actually, it it, it has half level uh, as it's shown here because it, there already existed a, a mates quarter up there. So it wasn't because we wanted it to have a split level. It actually has a split level because you already had this existing condition. So we took advantage of that, turned it into public and private. This is their. their her independent entrance from uh, her parking lot. And then um, a little bit of uh, how it was built, the construction sequence. Uh, something very interesting, which I will also talk about, is that um, uh, I love working in Mexico. And, and I, I mean, uh, I remember coming out of school and you always used to complain where you're from. No, oh, in my country, this doesn't happen or that doesn't happen. And I wish I was living in some other part of the world because there's really cool architects some other part and they really have good companies that help them uh, push things forward, and um, and but then I I, uh, I I guess it's when you start uh, growing up, no? When you start real, re realizing that you really have a lot of uh, important things happening in your own place, and and uh, why I wanted to say this is because when we got to a point where we were, we were doing the house, we had some iron workers doing the 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 the, the steel plates on the outside, and. And it was not, they were not getting, doing the right job, no? Because in Mexico, all the contractors say, don't worry, we're experts at everything. We can do everything. And don't worry, steel, yeah, we'll do steel. And, um, and there was a point where they, they weren't doing it right. So uh, I remember uh, this place in Mexico called Colonia Doctores, where if you uh, crash your car when you're young and you're borrowing your father's car for the first time, you take it to this place and they just work on the car. They, they fix it in like half an hour while you're having some tacos in the corner. And uh, so I, saw, I thought, why not take these guys that are not in the construction, but maybe they can do a better job. So I, I, I brought these to the construction site, and they actually did a better job. It was cheaper than the original company that was doing the project. And, uh, and I started understanding that there were a lot of different ways of doing things. No? And, and when you're designing, you have to think of what are the options and how to get it on time and on price and, and, and really take the best of the place that you're working. Um, the same thing happened uh, also with uh, Falcon headquarters. This is a, a project that uh, we did for a, for a pharmaceutical company. And, um, and we took an existing house and we started working also uh, with the idea, uh, hand in hand with the client again. Uh, uh, not the typical office, but working what, what did he want? What were, his, what were his needs or what were his, his desires? And, um, and uh, from here, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, also, the uh, cont contagious strategies, no, and 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 what happens when, uh, or this important uh, uh, idea to me at least that uh, when you when you actually uh, when you're a designer, uh, I don't know, but I, I, I've had this happen personally. No, the client comes in and says, you know what, I have a cousin who's an architect, so mm, I might not hire you. Or you know what, I have this new friend who's also an architect. So you're always getting. Uh, 
uh, hit in the face with something. You know? So I said, well, I mean, it's better if you have a strategy behind it and you're working with something that, that really has the power to become, uh, design a strategy and then design something. Uh, I mean, and work, work on it so you can design. And this is the first project that started to happen this way. And now with the crisis, I'm really uh, uh, um, happy that this happened bef even before the crisis, no? Uh, th we were called for ne uh, to work with Nestle on, a, on it was a small competition. It was only to do a small tunnel on the inside of the existing chocolate factory. And I remember going there and seeing, I took it, uh, I mean, I drove there and it was almost 40 minutes to get out of the city. And when we arrived, I was really depressed because it had taken me so long and then you would see generic factory after another. And I was imagining the kids getting on a school bus, driving all the way over, imagining Willy Wonka or something incredible to happen. And then arriving in this awful factory that didn't, didn't say nothing. So without even, a question in the client, and normally this is how we work. Somebody comes up to us and, and, and asks for, for a particular job, and then we just come back with a lot of feedback. And we don't know if the client might use it or not, but we want to use it, no? Um, so in this case, um, uh, we did some research. We came back and we noticed that there wasn't any chocolate museum in Mexico, and it was really uh, a missed opportunity because since uh, the Aztecs had invented chocolate and it was taken away then by the Spaniards and then brought a hundred years after as we know chocolate today, uh, it was an idea for Nestle to do a crossover from just selling products to giving something back to the city, giving a cultural part. So we presented the project to the client and he immediately, he was, he did, I mean at the beginning he didn't say anything, I was, I was, uh, I didn't know what he was thinking, but he took a plane uh, the next, uh, I think two days after, he went to Switzerland and he gave me a phone call and he said, eh, I have a, one, good news and bad news, no? The good news is that eh, we're doing the project, only one part of it, and the bad news is that we only have two months and a half to do the project. And, um, and I said, well, I'll get some friends, I'll fill the office with a lot of architects, we'll draw as fast as we can. And he said, no, 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 two months to build it, no? Two months and a half to <laughs> have it built. So we went from this model to this model to the on-site model, no? <laughs> and, uh, and I have some drawings here that, that, yes, sadly, we finished them after the building was built. <laughs> there was no way of doing it at the same time. And uh, it, was, it, was, um, uh, it was a bit stressful, but I, I, but I really, I mean, we had a lot of fun at the, uh, at the site. I mean, we, were, uh, we even have to design a, a way of uh, how to build it in that amount of time because obviously you, you, could, you could start working on a project and then do your regular drawings, but you have to then understand how to do drawings specifically for how it's going to be built. And we were doing uh, the foundation and the, and, and the concrete uh, 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 parts of the project while we were doing the steel, uh, cutting it on the, on the ground to start lifting it up. And of course you have some details that in, in regular cases you wouldn't have, no? You would have here a steel plate and the, and the uh, steel elements connected together. But here, it, we, with such fast pace, we just had to put it on top of the existing structure to get it, um, as I was explaining, on time. And some of the views as we were uh, finishing the project, or I mean, I, I I'll also talk about Murphy's Law, no? Because everything that could go wrong did go wrong. I mean, it rained when it was no rainy season. And uh, almost, uh, Finishing the, the, the building. Here you could see the, some guys happy because we were about to finish on time. Obviously, the good trade off was with the client it was okay, we'll do it in two months and a half, but you can't complain about anything. So if you don't like the lighting or the handle, or the, you can't tell me you don't like it because we don't, we're not going to have time to change it, no? So that's the good parts and the bad parts, no? And uh, actually, this is uh, Enrique Peña Nieto, uh, who's the governor of uh, the mayor of the state of Mexico. He's why we had to do it in two months and a half. He presented his uh, public speech, his government speech, and he told uh, this guy over here, who now is a really good friend, he's not working for Nestle anymore, but he told him that if he could give a speech there, he w uh, Nestle wouldn't need a, the permits to start the construction. So it was this kind of straight off. <laughs> not happy about it, but this happens in my in my country. And uh, this is one of the projects that I, can, I took my daughter. And um, obviously, as neurotic as we can get always, no, I was telling her, look at these lamps over here. And these, they move with the wind. And look at the details. No? And she didn't care about anything. She just went into the chocolate store, grabbed a, some uh, jugs, pushed the chocolate inside. And she said, OK, let's go, Dad. <laughs> and some nice pictures that uh, uh, Paul, who's sitting here with us, Paul, uh, 
it took for us in, when he came to Mexico to photograph the final images of the, of the Chaclan Museum. And this is actually what I really wanted the kids to experiment. I mean, it's not Willy Wonka, right? But uh, at least when the truck pulls or the, the bus pulls in, you have this opening that invites you to come in this uh, 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 space that, that looks like, a, we call it like an alebrije, these Mexican toys or maybe a, a chocolate wrap. But the folding sequence was the right idea to, to create a sequence going inside the, the museum. And there's even some slight color changes on, uh, uh, we try to accentuate the, the foldings with slight uh, tone changes on the inside. And um, it, was a, it was a very good experience uh, with the client. And, um, and uh, as I said, designing a strategy really got us to this, no? It got us to a place where we can do a, museum, uh, a chocolate museum. And it's also, this is another project that we did that we also created a strategy. And, um, I wanted to show it uh, because uh, we were called on to do an extension for a department store called Liverpool in Mexico City. So they wanted to extend uh, the department store across the street. So we told the client, okay, it's great. Let's, if we're gonna uh, do an extension across the street, why don't we have the main street become the, the main character of the building? So why don't we make it, in Mexico, there's a lack of public space. No? Normally, you're in a public space, but in what the, the times when it feels comfortable, it's, it's because it's private. No? Somebody has a uh, gated uh, or guy in the door, and then so it feels nice that you're in an exterior space, but actually there's no, it's not really public. And on the other hand, what we try to convince the client here is that he only wanted to do the commercial, but I had some other clients I was working with, and uh, they were interested in culture, so we proposed to do an auditorium and some movie theaters here, and we also proposed to do residential. So the client didn't ask for residential, and he didn't ask for uh, cultural uh, parts of the program, but I, I sat them down together. They started discussing, because I thought it was an opportunity to create a better project out of the original project that we had. Um, Unfortunately, this is a competition that now is on hold, but uh, they got together, they liked the idea, the city liked the idea uh, that we had proposed. Uh, we gave them a garden in the middle, uh, on top of the commercial area, so you have the residential on top of a, a, a nice garden, and the cultural area. And um, uh, I'm also really, um, 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 I, I like a lot the idea of digital design, but then local fabricated, no? with, with the experiences that we've had going to different places. It, and as I was talking about these guys in Mexico who were body workers, or, or how do you call them? The, the, well, the metal workers working in cars and we put them to work on, on, um, on the house. Uh, we, we got another commission by Nestle and this time we needed to do something in Querétaro. And uh, the client called me up and he said, oh, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna be happy about it because it needs to have arches, no? And I said, well, uh, at some other point, maybe when I, when I started out, I would say, no, 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 I definitely I won't do it, but I have a friend who loves arches and he'll do this really nice Mexican porticos. But now I think we're, uh, I love the, the, the idea of uh, grabbing things that I didn't like before and try to reinterpret them in a way that I now like them because I don't know if it's a kind of perversion not to uh, uh, try to uh, uh, do a different reinterpretation of it. And we, we, we did this project, uh, the city approved it because um, we had to do the arches because it was, Querétaro is, I forgot, how se llama? Patrimonio, yeah, pero como se dice en inglés? I forgot how to say it in English, but it's national, uh, it's protected, no? And uh, heritage. Thank you, Adita. It's a, it's heritage, it's protected. So uh, even though we're not in the city center, they wanted it to spread out in the in the industrial part. So actually, the project, uh, after a couple of versions, uh, versions, it shrunk down to a smaller piece that was composed of three elements. That on the lower part you have uh, some uh, laboratory laboratories in a research area. This is for Nestle and uh, and L'Oreal. They teamed up and they they're creating digestible cosmetics, which is kind of spooky. Now you're gonna <laughs> eat a cookie that you're gonna get a, ni a nice tan by eating a cookie or uh, a facial cream in a, in a chocolate, no? So uh, we wanted to create something that on the exterior look very, uh, a bit like a, um, a silver shiny that was kind of secret because you didn't know what was gonna happen on the, on the outside because everything closed. And originally the, the, the bottom part was gonna be open to the public. I mean, you could, I mean uh, in the public realm, you could just walk by. Because of the shrinking of the budget, then we had to put the labs here and then now you can't walk through it anymore, but you actually, uh, it's really interesting to see. And when I was talking about from digital design to local fabrication, I mean, obviously we can go in the computer, we can work with any programs we want, and it looks amazing, no? 
But then uh, I always try to, I'm going to do a cartoon or maybe a short film, but in Mexico at least this is what happens in some other countries that I've gone. You grab your incredible drawings, you give it to the contractor, and he says, yeah, well, sure, we can do this. Yeah, he signs everything. But then this guy gives it to his second on board. So then now the second on board starts looking like, hmm. And then he gives it to the other guy and the other guy. So when finally the guys that are really on the site, they don't know, they don't have a clue on what they, how they want to do, I mean, on what you want to do. And they're just looking at you like, what is this crazy guy want? How are we going to do all these elements that, yeah, again, they look good in the 3D model, but translate it and translate it in something that's, that's, that's on budget. So we thought of different ideas and different options. And uh, of course, in Mexico, we can do these uh, bovedas. And, uh, uh, but we said, well, well, how do we do these ones in a really inexpensive way? So we, we figured out a way of doing wee bars. So we did the d diameter of the wee bars uh, plus the height. And we started uh, uh, noticing where each point was. We had them done, uh, each one, on site in a very inexpensive way. The, inter the only thing that I really wanted was the, the, con the contractor to the intersection. I told him, this is the only place that I want you guys to spend. I want this to be CNC cut because the intersection has to be perfect. I mean, if we have the intersections and the spheres, I mean, come on guys, to getting from here to here would be easy. The contractor told me that he could get it done with a wee bar. Obviously, he, he couldn't. Um, the second thing that happened is that this is what we had a, how we had specified that you had these, the wee bars and you had a metal mesh and you had plaster and you would start working on it until you got a resin finish. But the contract, uh, contractor, as it sometimes happens, uh, thought he was smarter and he said, no, we're gonna put s sprayed foam on it and we're gonna do it faster. Uh, luckily, I went on site one day and I took this picture and I sent it to, this is not uh, the, the first image that you saw about the uh, contagious risk. This actually was really contagious. And I sent I send this to the, to the vice president and immediately he called me up and he said, uh, what's happening? Yeah, this is an image of your site and everybody, and nobody can work on the site because every, everybody has to wear masks and this is not what we specified. So he immediately uh, scraped everything off. He asked me to go on site and, and supervise everything to the right way. And these are some of the final images of the project as it looks today. This is the, the second project we've done for Nestle. Unfortunately, Pierluigi, who at this point was really, really, well, he's, really, he's still a really good friend. Uh, a headhunter went down to Mexico and they, uh, now he's in London working for uh, Unilever. <laughs> so the guys from Nestle are not happy and everybody that worked with Pierluigi now can't work with Nestle anymore. So uh, we'll see if we can work with Unilever <laughs> soon. Uh, the same thing happens with this one that we're doing in Mexico, a, a, a restaurant called Toritori. And uh, again, we work, we work with some friends. When I talk about contagious risk, I, I love the idea about collaborating. I could never be a, 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 an isolated architect working somewhere. We put together teams. We're a very dynamic office where we're only about 20 guys, but we end up having like teams of 60 people coming all together working on a project. And, um, and in this case, we work with the guys from Cocuya, Rob, uh, Roland and, and Rob, from, uh, they helped us with the facade, uh, the consulting, I mean, on the geometry testing of the facade. Then we also work with Hector Esraoui, who's a really good friend. He's sitting here in front uh, for the industrial uh, design. And, and uh, this is, again, a little bit of from digital design when we go from what's happening in the office to starting to get the pieces cut and understanding how we're going to do it on site and really getting it in, in, in I mean, if I told you the budgets that we can get these things done in Mexico, I mean you would be as happy as we are. <laughs> and I wanted to get into this part because it, we also brag about being this generation that we're all, we all are friends, we all get together, we're really uh, nice to each other, we recommend everybody. But it, it, I think we have to learn also a lot uh, of the process and not only about generation-wise that we can share a lot of stuff, but also uh, from what's happening to clients. And this, again, relating to my personal life, this is my broken collarbone when I was, uh, snowboarding in, a, uh, in uh, Austria. I was doing a lecture and we went snowboarding and I ended up in a hospital uh, under, with an operation. But uh, figuring out who are we working for, and this is a project that we were invited to do in Kuwait. And um, I was really happy at this time, this was in 2005, and we were five offices competing for this project. Uh, Asim Tot, uh, the Will Alsop, uh, and I, uh, two other offices in my office, but eventually, I mean, we were the smallest one there. So we went there, we did a project, we started working on something that we were really uh, comfortable on presenting. 
Uh, it was really strange because the client uh, flew us uh, in only for 24 hours and then kicked us out. So we didn't understand what was happening. So I thought, oh, I want to keep it confidential. I don't want anybody to know that you guys are here. And we presented this project and uh, uh, we didn't get paid for the competition. We said, it's a selection. We'll give you the tickets. We'll give you the hotel. Come on over to Kuwait. You'll see that uh, we're for real. And after two years uh, uh, that we started emailing each other the, between architects, uh, we found out that the, the client who had brought us to Kuwait was not even the owner of the site. So uh, uh, he was speculating on, on trying to buy the property and it was awful, no? Because uh, you think at, at some point, I mean, uh, things happen for real. So this is why I, I like to say that sometimes you don't know who you're working for. And, um, and, uh, and, and also, I mean, this, this also happened uh, uh, in a project that we that we that we did in 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 Ordos that I think we were learning about that one no uh, that that's between uh, uh, between architects that the result a lot of the architects here can tell you about but uh, with this client that I swore that I would never work again for the Kuwait project he called he called us again and he said you know what uh, I'm sorry about last time but uh, here's a nice juicy check uh, you're hired to do a hotel in Dubai now. So I said, are you, are you for real? No? And then I checked my bank account and he was for real. So I said, okay, I, I mean, we, we can give him a second chance and we can start working with him. And we were invited to Kuwait to do a, it was funny because he said, the only thing that I want you guys to think about is EST. And I said, what's EST? Yes, he said, yeah, it has to be either the biggest or the shiniest or the whatever you can put EST on. So uh, I immediately uh, uh, thought about this, no? I mean, every, they're always thinking about the, the, the tallest building, but uh, uh, every time we have the tallest building, their lifespan is the shortest ever, no? I mean, uh, they just presented the tallest building, and now I think somebody else has a new tallest building. So it doesn't last as long as, as before. So uh, I, was, I was questioning, I mean, is this the only way to show power? Uh, what if we change orientation, no? Uh, what if size is really not that important? And what if we come back to the origin? And uh, this is why we presented this project called Code Horizon. And it's a horizontal a, a hotel, 1,800 rooms. And we're thinking, I mean, retail center at the bottom, and then just uh, splitting the hotel into different uh, uh, elements so you can have uh, something that was really uh, independent or you would really feel that you're in a personalized hotel. So if you came in with your kids, you would have uh, the, the kids uh, level with the playgrounds and everything. Or if you wanted to come to the business level, you would have all the business part of the project and so forth. So uh, uh, by having this project or creating this project, we were uh, wanting to personalize and come back to the, 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 the basic uh, parts of the pro of of why we were doing architecture to, to make people really feel uh, welcomed. And another funny story about this project is that um, when, we, uh, when we went to present at, uh, this project at the hotel in, 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 in Dubai, the door of the elevator opened where we were staying at, and suddenly Bjarke Ingels comes out, and I said, ah, what are you doing here? No? He's like, oh, you know what, I got uh, paid by a client, I'm doing a hotel here in Dubai, an 1,800-room hotel. So I'm like, what are you talking about? I mean, we need to have, go upstairs and have a drink or something. So we eventually started talking, and the client had done it again. I mean, he had put money in our bank accounts for five firms. I mean, Philip Stark, Jaime Jayon, big in our office. And uh, we were again uh, being, uh, I don't know how you say it in English, but we were really, really angry. I mean, it was, um, obviously nothing happened. Nobody knows what happened to this hotel. Nobody won the competition. But... Um, so it's, it's, it's this idea that I was telling you that, that you know, we don't know who we're working for, no? And, and on the other hand, what I was talking about, the Ordos project, this is what I was explaining a little bit of how we all get together. We're all really good friends. And this is an example of things that I really think we need to learn. Even though, of course, I'm happy that I get an invitation by a good friend. In this case, uh, Yang Song Ma, uh, who we competed together uh, with a, a tower in Canada, the Absolute Tower, and he won. But uh, after he won, he really liked our design. We were one of the six finalists, and we became friends after that. And he invited 10 offices to work on this Guyang project. And, uh, and of, of course, again, we're very excited. We get there. And when you see the results, I mean, I don't know. Uh, uh, 
I mean, you can all figure out by yourselves, no? But I think that it's not only about getting an opportunity to work in a different country or in a different environment or working with your friends. We still have a lot to learn about uh, how to work together because, of course, yes, we're more collaborative. We, we, we like to share a lot more than, than we did before. But I don't know if we're doing it the right way. And um, obviously, I want to uh, uh, talk about the contagious pleasures because it's not all uh, learning and the bad sides of it. And, the contagious pleasures to me is that uh, every time we do a project, we, we want to take the new chance to, uh, on working on it. It's very, uh, I mean, we haven't done it that we repeat a project. We don't like repeating a project because we're thinking we miss an opportunity. And so in this case, we, we had this, uh, this tower that we were designing in Mexico until the client said he didn't like it, that he, it looked like a beehive and nobody wanted to live in a beehive. And they called us from, from Canada to do the, the, this competition I was telling you about that Yang Song Ma won. And uh, they told us, why don't you present this guy, but just put more levels because we want a 60-story high-rise. And as I was saying, no, we didn't want to miss an opportunity on doing something new again or, or, or trying to uh, throw away all the, the previous uh, experiments that we've been doing and try to jump into a different way of seeing it. And we did uh, experiment it with a different exoskeleton and working with a very important team it's, uh, to, to figure out how we were going to build this. This is the second phase where we presented the project, and, uh, and as I said, we didn't win. This is a project that's ongoing that we're working on in, in, in Mexico, in, in Monterrey, called uh, Pulse Tower. It's one of the two most important uh, uh, projects done now in, in Monterrey. And uh, this is a residential, this is a, a, an office space, and then you have a, all the retail at the bottom, which in Mexico, normally when you try to negotiate with the client to leave open spaces at the, at the ground level or the, in the pedestrian realm, they normally don't understand that part. And I, I'm glad that we've been, we've been pushing clients to understand how important it is to really, if, if each of them start working on a project where they invite people to come in, it'll cre definitely create a better city. And uh, that's where I d differentiate the uh, uh, private, how do I call that? Uh, private developers and private depredators, no? That I say there's some clients that just want to finish the city. And um, with this, I'm going to present the last project uh, that I'm happy because we've been uh, working on these different towers. But finally, we're going to get to do one in our own country, in Mexico City. And uh, uh, we're working on this project uh, uh, called the R40. R432, that's the address of where it is, and it's in Paso de la Reforma. And it's, uh, it's a high rise in front of St. Regis. Paso de la Reforma is one of our most important uh, uh, avenues in Mexico. Um, and the, the interesting thing about it is that, um, well, these are some of the, uh, how, uh, how it's seen, no? Aerial views, long corridors. Uh, and I think because of the failure that Santa Fe has, uh, has seen because of the bad infrastructure that we have in Mexico, uh, people are coming down to the city center and Reforma is changing dramatically uh, because it's obviously the, the location. And um, my client uh, had bought a couple of uh, lots here. And this is one of the clients that I think we all have. No, This client was... Uh, he's, he had been a client of mine for five years. No, it's a typical client that calls you up and tells you, "Oh, I have this site. Do you know what we can do there? Do you can you draw maybe in a napkin something so I can maybe get some numbers and try to figure out?" And for five years we never worked together. I mean, it was only these fa small favors, and then it paid off finally. No, I, he came back and I said, "I know how I'm going to pay you. I bought." two or three sites here, and I, we want to do a tower. So we started with a 20-level uh, high-rise. Uh, fortunately, they rezoned the whole area, and they changed it from 20 levels to 40 levels. So my client uh, uh, went uh, crazy and started buying all the properties. We now have 12 properties. These are 11, but from when we finished this presentation, now we have another lot here. <laughs> And uh, this is the, the on-site, uh, on the location, what we have. These are some of the views. And uh, the interesting thing that uh, we try to work on is, uh, first of all, how do we convince our clients to uh, 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 work on something that, uh, that it works for his numbers, but we kind of give something back to the city. And uh, this is a little bit of what, could hap what, what would happen to the site. Uh, he wanted all, uh, all the apartments to look, uh, I mean, uh, the Reforma, and then have these other apartments looking in Manchester. But uh, I started uh, figuring out where to put the different elements in, in the case that we can uh, spend money on, 
on, on, on the most important parts of the project and work on the, on the other ones and try to get it again on budget. Uh, the client wanted the best view possible, so we did some research and we actually came out that bay windows really worked, but we hate bay windows, so we kind of reinterpreted the idea of bay windows. Uh, we started working with this idea on, on mind. But then uh, if when the tower is cutting through its way up, you could see the midpoint is always shifting. So the nice part about it is that we can get the uh, reinterpretation, uh, reinterpretation of these bay windows, but create an element that would actually give us something interesting for the facade and its final expression towards Paso de la Reforma. And the program, what, how it's composed is that you have the drop off in the front, obviously because you have all the manifestations here in Reforma, riots and everything. So we decided to bring the cars in from the back, just have the drop off here. And you have three levels of retail. You have residential, 340 apartments. And you have some, uh, a hotel on top. The Buddha bar is gonna open in Mexico, the hotel uh, for 56 rooms on the top of the building. And something that again was, really important to us is that uh, most of the buildings in Mexico, when you have these high rises there, they don't care about the city. They just come in, they, they do their high rise. Uh, they don't care about the pedestrian realm. If whatever uh, material they have in their, in their uh, reception, they just bring it out to show everybody that they're there. So the first thing that I, I wanted to do is, uh, instead of pulling out the same material that we had on the inside, we're bringing in the material from Paso de la Reforma. The second part we're doing is also that Manchester is a closed street now. Uh, it's not open, uh, and we're gonna open it up and we're gonna uh, create a new, a, a new living space because we have this last property, so we're opening up all the way back to Tokyo Street, uh, incrementing the potential of the zoning in, in Tokyo towards Reforma, but the most important thing, creating a new public realm that happens underneath the tower and, and creating a retail, uh, all across, even the, the buildings that are here that now have a, a, a residential, they, 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 the government is uh, negotiating so they can change the zoning. And for the tower not to feel like 340 units, uh, at least what we're trying to do graphically uh, with uh, chromatically is we're, we're naming the, the different modules of the tower with, and, and we're working with, as I was explaining, with uh, the different colors and different elements so you could live in, in the water space and you'll feel like part of this community or feel like part of this community, but uh, uh, taking care of the slightest detail. This is an image that right now is on the website, which I also like. We're also working with a, a photographer called Guido Torres, who's a really good friend and he's a really good artist. And we wanted uh, even the website to promote the building, not as most of the, pro uh, the, the media that we've seen that uh, if you buy a property here in our building, you're your color, your eye color is going to change. No, you're going to be more handsome. You're going to have more wives, or you're going to be more no wealthier. But and uh, so we said, well, if people buy here, they're going to buy it because it's in it's in Mexico City, and this is what happens uh, in the everyday. And uh, uh, this is a little bit of what's happening on the floor plan. I, I mean, uh, I can go over it quickly. But the the, uh, the entrance for the residential, uh, the hotel, you get uh, obviously through the drop off, but you enter here, you go up one level and then you take these three panoramic elevators all the way up which look over Condesa, the car entrance is in the back, uh, the crossing of the street where we had left at the beginning uh, these bollards so the cars can go in on these buildings that were not ours. Now we gave them parking in our building so now there's, it's a carless street. Um, and going up the tower, you have a, a retail on these parts overlooking the main uh, entrance for the, for the building. And it, as it goes up, you start getting the independent units. Something that was nice is that at the beginning we had this space for the two elevators for the hotel. When we were doing the traffic studies, they, we figured out that we couldn't get it with two elevators, so we put three elevators here in the back. And immediately the client wanted to take over this space. He said, let's sell it. That's incredible space. Let's take advantage of it. So uh, we convinced the client to leave it as public space because this is a beautiful garden. And when you come out of the elevators, actually the view you get is El Castillo de Chapultepec, our Chapultepec castle. And it's, it's incredible. And it, this is a great area to just walk out. And for people that smoke, they can have a cigarette outside or you can read a, a book to your daughter after going, uh, uh, taking her to sleep. And uh, then you have a setback of the building so you can have the right proportion towards Tokyo Street and Manchester. And then this part, it, it sets back and then you have the tower going completely um, um, of the residential, one unit each. The amenities. Mm. A little bit of the sections of, of how it's working. 
And also, one, one thing that I wanted, uh, I was concentrated about is that in Mexico, most of the high rises that we have, it looks like they gave them steroids, no? It, it was like a small scale building and they just, they pull it up and then it has the scale of a building like in Condesa where you only have six levels or eight levels and it suddenly looks really weird. Or you have these international firms that you get buildings that are so generic that you don't even know where you are anymore. So we wanted to work on a module that really accentuated that we were thinking of a high rise and giving a facade that really uh, uh, looked like a uh, like a smaller scale building, which is towards Tokyo and towards Reforma, a perforated metal facade. And, and by working these modules, we, we really wanted to create like a first urban high rise in, in, in Mexico. These are the first images of the project. This is, uh, I mean, the website is up, but we don't have all, all, all the images fully. Uh, shown uh, again about the collaborations we're, we're working with a uh, finally in Mexico we're working we're working with some consultants that could never happen before or didn't happen but we're working with front here from New York uh, for facade consultants and uh, some of the, the the plans we've been working on how to have this facade done as I was explaining in the right time in the right budget and uh, what needs to be worked on site some of the different uh, studio uh, studies that we did how it's gonna be ensembled, the structure of the building. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, sustainable issues, which I'm not gonna go through because I always, I always uh, they complain a little bit that everybody brags a little bit too much about uh, sustainable and uh, sustainable things. And I think we, we need to do it because it's the right thing to do, not because we want our, our, our business card to be, uh, look more expensive or we can charge more because we're doing it. it, it it's a social thing that I think uh, and uh, we think it needs to come around, not only the, the na natural the nature part of it, but also the sustainable socially or economically. You know? uh, a little bit of how it's going to start look, uh, the building, the idea that you fragment the facade and then you get the different reflections. And a little bit of, I mean, imagine this is gonna change dramatically, you know? I mean, with the height that we have here. Uh, so I wanted this idea to be a sort of memory of what's going to happen or how it's going to change. Uh, during uh, the construction of the whole Paseo de la Reforma. We already have a building by Richard Rogers in Legorreta that was, uh, uh, they won the competition for, for Vancomer. And also a little bit of how it comes down to the ground, the public realm that you can go around. And slight details that when, when if you like construction as I like it, you, you start figuring out ways of how do we make it look that the clients spend a lot of money when they really did not spend as much money as, as, they, as they, they had. So uh, the facade, the structure of the facade is going behind the glass so we can actually do it with any material and just paint it uh, with, uh, with a metallic finish so it looks like you have a steel structure on the inside. But when it comes out of the building, you do have a stainless steel uh, structure. So it's gonna look like it was made of stainless steel. Obviously the final finish on the facade is, is, is a, um, a composed material that we're working on with uh, 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 with Adrian and Mark from, from front uh, to get the right uh, intention for the building. The, oh, sorry, the street, were, uh, when we had the bollards first, but as I was explaining now, this is all gonna be pedestrian. The entrance to the uh, retail area. This, we, we, we did this rendering with a nice view of the volcanoes. We, we've been having these incredible views of the Popocatépetl and the Isla. But imagine the scale of the city that we have, 20 something million, and, and the scale that it has, now that it's going to change with these new buildings in Reforma. That I, I think it's definitely that we, that we need that, no? Some of the uh, preliminary ideas of the rooftops. And um, the configurations, we did a structure that you can actually buy units, 70 square meter units and configure them in any way, vertical, horizontal. These are the 70 square meter units, turnkey project. And, um, and this is a, an image with a, the Legorreta project in the back. This is Richard Rogers and Legorreta. And this is the bicentennial arch that uh, we presented at a competition that I won't show you today, but uh, uh, this is the guy who won, Cesar Becerril. And um, I want to uh, close off just by showing you a new contagious risk, which I had never uh, shown before. This is a company that we just launched uh, a week ago, and uh, it's called Agent, Strategic Intelligence Embassy. And uh, uh, I teamed up with, with uh, were four guys, uh, two business guys from uh, Monterrey, that originally they were, my, they were my clients for this Monterrey Tower, and now they're my partners in this new company, and Alberto Villarreal, an industrial designer. And uh, we teamed up to do so, uh, things uh, uh, for a contemporary society that's changing, and we figure out that some of the products that are there haven't changed that much as, or as fast as society is changing. So um, 
and it's it's another playground for me because I want to I I, I want to keep my head uh, always thinking as an exercise of what could happen. No, I think I always say that I never passed the phase when I was little and asking my parents why why is this or why is that. No, I think I ask why more now than when I was a kid. And we created the first uh, transparent soccer ball. No, it's an airless uh, transparent or see-through football. And this is a little, little bit of the video that you're, you can see on. Oh. It has an embedded chip, GPS system. Um, it can measure the strength of the hit. If it goes out of bounds or if it's a goal, it changes color. So you don't have to have the, uh, the, the guys following the ball around seeing if it was out of bounds or not. It can detect the hand. <laughs> It has some cameras or sort of some scanners that we're working on for having a POV from the soccer ball. And, and this is a little bit of what I'm talking about. You would imagine that, that, no, that nobody's thinking of a different soccer ball, but maybe we, if you get an architect with an industrial designer with the guys that do business but are not in the sports field, we can think of something different, and that's why we created Agent. And, and to wrap it up, guys, I mean, I don't want to work in isolation. Uh, this is me with my broken collarbone. I want to break more bones, no? Uh, I want to feel alive. I want to feel that I'm always at risk, that I'm not in a comfort zone. And uh, nevertheless, we know that without contact and, of course, a certain contagious risk, life does not endure. It does not change. It does not reproduce. And in one word, it does not live. Thank you. <laughs>